we can't control what's going to be on the board. There's 31 of the teams picking, so we just try to take advantage of our opportunities in the draft to improve our team however we can. So that's the way I've always approached it. I really can't, I, I can't work on any, any other way. I, I just, you know, I don't feel comfortable going to the draft saying, well, we're going to you know, take one guy at this position, take another guy at that position, or, you know, like if it doesn't go that way, then I just don't think you're getting the value, you know, for the picks that you have. Now, look, we've all, you know, made picks that worked out well, and we've all made picks that didn't work out so well. So it's, it's an in, inexact science. And I'm not saying that, you know, all the decisions are, you know, have been good decisions or bad decisions or anything else. And development's part of it, too. We talked about that after Robert Kraft said what he had to say about the recent drafts of the New England Patriots. It's not just the guys you take. It's what you do to make them into NFL players, which I think is part of what the Patriots need to fix. But it is a crapshoot. It is inexact. And he gave a a much longer answer. We just played part of it. They have a system that isn't just grades. They color code. You know, you have to account for the fact that your needs influence your assessment. Right. And anyone who says we always take the best available player is lying. Right. Because the best available player, your assessment of it is influenced by what you need. And if you've got Patrick Mahomes and the best available guy on your board is a quarterback, you ain't taking the quarterback unless you want Patrick Mahomes to launch a passive aggressive effort to be traded the following year. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it has to match. You know, yes, it's it's about like what Bill Belichick is telling you. It's the, the value of the draft. Okay, we're picking here. All right, we have this need, right? But we have no player that's worth the value of the pick right here with that need. Okay, let's trade down. Let's trade down and maybe, the you know, trade down and now we'll address that need lower down to where it meets, you know, where the guys we have that need graded are on our, on our chart, right? Or you stay where you are there and go, okay, we don't, this isn't our number one need. But it matches up with what we did, what, what, like uh, where we got these guys drafted, and this is our number two need. It's all about balancing that. That's why I find Mike like their second round pick, Christian Barrymore. When when the Patriots trade up, I I perk up a little bit because that means to me they had a guy there at pick thirty eight in the draft that. He was sitting there, and they probably had him valued as one of the top 20 players in the draft. And Belichick's sitting there, or a top 25 players in the draft, where he's looking at his board going, wait, it's pick 38. We have this guy valued here. What what, what are we doing? We got to make a move up and go get him then, if that makes sense. And the board must have told them that, because they're not the type of organization that's really going to stray from their board, their formula, anything like that. And that's what's you know, made them miss at times, but of course has made them build a, a pretty damn good football team for a long time as well. Barmore was a guy who was perceived to be sliding because of some issues, yeah. work ethic, et cetera. Nick Saban came out and defended him last week, and Nick Saban's not going to put his name on the line. He doesn't, right. If there is anything to it, and, and, and that was good enough for Bill Belichick. He probably wishes Saban hadn't said anything about it publicly, but they were still able to get him. Ernie Adams, the... Director of Football Research, I think, was the title, but nobody quite knows exactly what Ernie Adams did other than get things Official done. CIA member of the New England Patriots. <laughs> Most impressive contribution, Super Bowl Forty Nine. He was the one who spotted that shotgun formation, double receivers on each side, Seattle Seahawks, the tendency in short yardage to throw out of that set. So they had Brandon Browner. The, you, you pick... You pick the the defensive back and the other guy's open on the in route. So Brandon Browner held the receiver that right. was going to be making the pick, right. allowing Malcolm Butler to make the interception. Yes. And that was all er- something Ernie Adams found. They practiced it that week, and, and then lo and behold, you get a Super Bowl ring out of it. We'll never have the full totality of how great Ernie Adams was or how special he was unless Belichick opens up the vault and lets us know all the special things he does for that football team or did for that football team. I don't know. I worked there for a year and a half. I got no clue exactly. He was in a room on the side, Mike. I think I've said this before. I used to love to go in there because I knew he was working on some like you know research project that was high level and nobody else was supposed to know it. I'd walk in because I might have to give him the practice schedule or stuff like that. And he'd be like, 
as soon as I'd walk in, he'd turn off his TV and close his laptop and cover his notes like it was some top secret mission he was working on. So I always got a kick out of that. But uh, great, great part of that Patriots organization. Why in the hell did they ever even hire you? They probably thought you were a giant spy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't had know. spot of that. Well, I don't know. Maybe, why they, maybe they were feeding you false information that you were running back to the New York Giants. Of all the teams, <laughs> the only team that kicked their butt in the Super Bowl before the Eagles did, beat them twice, and they get. And there may be some higher level stuff. Maybe Ernie Adams was behind that. I'm not that, that too. smart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, and they're going to have to replace him now, and that's really the question. Where's the next Ernie Adams come from, right. and do we see that manifest itself? in some slippage in what the Patriots are able to do. How much of the genius of Bill Belichick is going to be peeled away by the absence of that? Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.